this is some single mom shit. I, I'm just like totally shocked. This is how you fix it. You get a screwdriver and you get these little washers. Got the Range Rover back. And yes, it's on E like I expected. What I did not expect for the car to be absolutely filthy. Inside now, mud on the tires. There's like, I don't know if there was animals up in here. It was crazy. And I shouldn't be surprised based on what went down. Uh, I got some comments. I was lenient. I told him to bring the vehicle back and he didn't. Now, part of this is some of it's with the law. Like, they're like, all right, this is what I'm supposed to do. And every cop doesn't know this. I'm supposed to send them a recertified letter asking them to bring my property back within five days. And then there's a five day wait period. So typically all cops are not aware of the finer details. So essentially the cop I got today, you know, she took the information and she called him and that's what I really wanted because typically when they hear from the police, that's when I get the car back. So, you know, it's like, it's, it's been a credible week wrangling cars. I am finished with phase one. I'm not buying any more cars to August or September. Um, it's been a crazy week and I'm here at the car wash right now getting this handled so I can rent it out to someone else. I mean, people, people. And he told me he was gonna be there at 315 and he snuck in at three and left the vehicle and left the key behind the tire. Because essentially in this situation, they don't wanna face you. They don't wanna face you when you have to call the police on them. And this is typically, this happened last time. Last time, I actually had to go pick up the car because they don't wanna face you. And one of the issues I keep hearing is, well, twice, it's like, how am I gonna get back? Uber, Uber. And he wasn't there because I picked up the car. I found the car shortly after I got this text that the key was behind the wheel. But I'm here, you know, it, it's interesting how people are. And one of the things that is like, I'm tightening up on my policy because I, I got a girl who I may just tell to bring it back because she goes a day late and then I have to hit her up and then she'll pay. And it's this constant pushing, nudging. And like, I got probably 14 renters that they just pay. They just pay. I never have to do this little boosting. I never have to. So I, I'm not surprised that the vehicle's in this condition that it's in. Not surprised at all. So I should get reimbursed for the wash, which is $34, because I'm doing have them do inside and out. I should get reimbursed for the key. I am not getting reversed for the seven day late on the rental. Now what they're gonna do is he cannot rent any more cars on hire car until he pays me. So I don't know how that's gonna go because he was like, I got $1,400 in my pocket and I'm just like, mm-hmm, sure you do, sure you do. That's why you're six days late. So, um, you know, it's, it's kind of funny. I'm, I'm starting to read personalities, you know, cause um, essentially there are signs when you're dealing with this type of personality when you're gonna be dealing with these type of issues. And part of this is like next time someone says they lost a key, what I'm gonna do is like, all right, and they call someone to fix the key, I'm going to pick the car up instantly. Because if they lost the key and they don't have the money to pay the key, that's a sign that they're gonna be late. That is the sign. And essentially her car is gonna hit him up for the key, which was 700 bucks. And it's not even like the original key. 
because I gotta have another Range Rover key made tomorrow and the guy's gonna make an exact key. This isn't the key that came with the vehicle. This isn't, it's a completely, this is a key that they have for the Range Rover LR4s. This is the key they would use. So it works, but it ain't the exact key. And this was 700 bucks. And um, I mean, the whole ordeal has just left me a little salty because if this doesn't rent well, I'm trading out of it. Because the, I bought the car, he rented it, he paid for like a week, and then this started to happen. And I can get two cars for what this cost. Because this was right at 15. And essentially, what I'm learning to do is to buy cars at the appropriate price. Last week, I got one two three four i got five cars at the appropriate price where if i have to rent them for 39 dollars, i can rent them for 39 dollars and still make money this i cannot rent for 39.99 dollars and because the the payout is too long you know uh this rents out at a hundred and we will see how long it sits before it goes out again because i haven't even done the check-in because i got to get a receipt for the gas I got to get a receipt for the car wash. Well, actually, I got a receipt for the car wash here. So I got that and I got to submit all that when I check them in. But last week I bought some DMWs and I'm gonna do a video talking about how to buy cars for a higher car in Turo because the BMW, there, there's a lot of them and you can get them pretty cheap. Like I got, one that I spent 70, 200 bucks for. And I rent it out for 55 bucks a day. But the car, and I got another one that I spent like 9,100, rented out at 55 bucks a day. And I got a white one that had a recall on it because I was trying to put it on Toro. Because as a recall, Toro won't allow it to be listed. So that's at the BMW dealership. I got another one. I bought a 330i. Went out very quickly. I got that one cheap for like eight eight thousand. So essentially, what this represents is two of those cars, and the math on those two cars is better than the math on this one car. Um, depending on if I get another renter for this car quickly. That's why I'm here getting it washed. I'm gonna gas it up and I'm gonna take it back to the lot. But um, a lot of it really depends because I was doing some math and for my Range Rovers, cause I have one, two, three, four Range Rovers and I have a BMW SUV. I have five SUVs and I can trade those five SUVs in for 10 cars. And I'm like, hmm, I may do that anyway. It just depends because this is where I'm having a lot of issues. The Porsche was stolen, SUV, and I'm having issues with this segment. Now, I had an issue with one of the Acras, but that, that was her. I don't know. I don't know. So we will see. We will see because... Um, one of the things that I'm learning is how to head this stuff off because like this, this didn't go 10 days. I cut it off at six days and I really pushed him. And the guy was just like, today he was just like, you know, I don't, his exact words was, I don't respond to threats. He thought me calling the police was a joke. He didn't think I was gonna call the police. But when I called the police and the cop called him, I got the car back. I got the car back within three hours. And it was a weird story because he was in Fayetteville, but the car was in Latonia, which tells me that he rented this car for somebody. Which is a, a is starting, I'm starting to see this as a problem because he didn't have the car. Someone else had the car who was a filthy little critter. 
I'm just sitting there like, who, who lives like this? Who lives like this? I am not a dirty person. I don't um, do these things, but I'm just sitting there. I, I actually think that he rented the car for someone. I think he rented the car for someone and which is why he had such a lackadaisical attitude. And um, yeah, we're gonna have to put messaging on that because I already have messaging that only you should be driving this car because this is uh, like, I rented out the BMW, she came back in her vehicle and someone else was driving the BMW. So I gotta stress that you should be the only one driving this car. Put that in the messaging, you know, CYA, cover my booty. And um, I'm, I'm starting to get a handle on this because like I said, I may get rid of all of the SUVs because I can trade them in for two, like the BMW, I can trade that in for two $10,000 cars, which I can rent out for 55 bucks a day versus 70 bucks on the BMW. So I will net out at $93 a day, money in my pocket versus 70 minus the 25%. It's, it's like almost double the money. So from a business standpoint, I may do that. It just depends because uh, if I bring in the SUVs and I raise the price to 100 bucks a day and they don't run out, they're gone. And we're getting real close because I should get the, I got the title to the Porsche, incidentally. But I should be getting the titles to the Range Rovers, two Range Rovers and the BMW, which I can turn three cars into six really, really quickly. And that's what I'm thinking about doing from a business tactical standpoint, because um, I've not had these issues with the Camry. I've not had these issues with the Acuras. And I think I may downgrade to a cheaper product because, you know, people want what they want, but if they can't afford it, they don't have the kahunas to say, hey man, I can't afford it, I'm bringing it back. They just wanna keep it and play these little games. But I'm not surprised that he did not wanna face me because he knew he was wrong. He was wrong. And this happened the last time. But once again, until I get to GPS trackers and kill switches, um, now that phase one is completed, I got more time to work on that and essentially find me someone who can do this and not take three weeks up to three months. I mean, you know, it, it, it's, it's just another little frustrating um, segment of the business because some of these cars, like this one, to put a GPS kill switch in it, it's gonna take some work. It's gonna take some work. And that's why I'm probably gonna get rid of this. Um, this is one of the newer acquisitions. I got two Range Rover Sports that I recently bought. So I'm not gonna get the title until July, maybe even August. So I'm kind of stuck with them and I'm just gonna put them out and rent them. I only lower the price because one of the things is you have to pay tax, dealer fees, and tag fees. Those are fees that I cannot recoup from selling the car. That's stuff t stacked on top. And if I can go ahead and rent these cars to recover that money, make myself whole, because um, I'm not going to actively buy any more cars for let's say we got rest of june july and august or i might even go to september because i have a lot of fees that i need to recover gas insurance and if i can recover all that and actually move into an operating profit on that where i've uh, got all of that stuff set up i've got all of that taken care of and I got all that money back in my pocket, then that's going to be a win. That's going to be the thing to do. That's going to be the thing to set up because now I'm in phase two. And what is phase two? And I'll be talking about this some more. Phase two is seeing what works and what doesn't work. 
I'm been doing this six weeks and phase two is probably going to extend to rest of June, July, and August. So all these YouTubers who are telling you you can make all this big money in just 30 days, please post their names down here of any YouTuber that told you you can make this money in 30 days and you actually took their advice and you started making money in 30 days. Please post that information. I would appreciate it because one of the big issues here on YouTube is you got a lot of people who are telling you, uh, I got a video on Savage Finance um, talking about the fastest way to make money, giving you accurate information on how to make money because so many people are full of it. They're full of it. It's going to take me six months of buying assets, putting assets on platforms and running experiments and testing before I really get a, a firm, firm handle, like I said, I'm getting a firmer handle, like dealing with renters, because essentially the next time this happens, uh, I'm gonna have my asset back in two days, because I'm gonna start hammering them really hard on day one, and I'm like, look, if you can't afford it, just bring it back. Or, and I'm gonna put in there, I'm gonna call the police, because, and just send them information that is called theft by conversion, and just go ahead and not extend this out, because, like I said, the first day, she was, the first one, she was playing games. She said she was gonna bring the car, then she had to go to her mama's house, she had to go to storage, she had to do all of this stuff, and this guy had a similar theme. Similar theme, I gotta do this, I gotta do this, I gotta do this, I got this going on, and it's all BS. It's all 100% BS. Because it has nothing to do with them bringing my car back, which literally, they could do really quickly. But I feel that this guy rented this car for someone else, probably a chick um i need to check and see if there are car seat marks in here i don't know but he, he clearly rented this for someone because he wasn't because the car wasn't with him and you know two times the porsche got stolen because this dude let this chick drive it i bet she was pretty i bet she was a big booty betty Oh baby, let me drive the Porsche. And she gets hijacked. And because she's a chick and her mind is blown, she can't give the cop any accurate information. More than likely, there is no be on the lookout for this car. Cause she couldn't give me any information. And I'm I'm just sitting there, you know, they took her phone, they took her wallet, they took all her stuff. I don't know how carjackings go. I don't know how they go, but Essentially, she, she couldn't get a copy of the information. And I suspect that, I feel that Hire Car is gonna pay me out for it, but I feel there's gonna be a little drama with this. I just feel there's gonna be a little drama with this and um, we, we will see. But yeah, he brought it back filthy. Filthy, filthy, filthy. I'm just sitting there like, even the dashboard is dirty. There's crumbs and stuff all over the seats and there's mud on the top. I'm just like, what? Like, I don't know if they took it off road or they were up in the country. I don't know. But this is reporting to you live because you ain't seeing none of this stuff on any of the hire car video or any of this stuff. Well, I think there's a guy with hire car where a renter kept his car for 10 days and didn't want to give it back and actually left. Because here's the thing. When the relationship goes bad between you and the renter, they don't want to face you. They don't want to look you in the eye and go, because they know they're wrong. They know they're wrong. So that's one of the issues that I'm dealing with. But I feel test, you know, phase two, June, end of June, July and August, I'm gonna learn a lot more. I'm gonna get a little bit more savvy because a lot of this with my policy, because uh, essentially on all my listings, I have that you should be the only one that's driving. And I actually have it in there. All the new renters know that to the, if you run into a problem, just bring it back. And my messaging and my communication is about to amp up because like I got one girl, uh, every time she gets one day, I be on her, three messages, she pays. And I got another one because I may just tell her to bring it back. Because if like, let's, let's say 
what happens in um, phase two. I get the title to the BMW and the Range Rovers. They may be gone. That's six cars I can get. So I can replace three cars with six cars. And I don't have to sell them. I can go to the dealer, trade them in, and negotiate and get two cars for that one car. And that's what I'm gonna do because um, the math is better. And like I said, uh, I'm gonna do a video talking about how to buy cars for Turo. You know, it's gonna be kind of long because I, you know, I've, I've loaded up some of the assets, but I got some more to load up because it's gonna be a combination of pictures. And it's gonna be a combination of website research because I got onto the BMWs. I have two 330s, I have a 550, and I have two 535Is. So that's two, I've got five BMWs, and except for the one that's in the BMW shop, which I should get back Wednesday, and the 330 I gotta take in for a service, but they're all rented and I bought them. They rent it, all of them rented out, the 550 would be rented out if I had it. They all rented out the first week I got them. And I feel, and I have a good BMW mechanic. That's one of the reasons I feel comfortable buying these because I got someone who can fix them. And um, the Camrys are doing well. And we will see, we will see. But that's your update on this filthy Range Rover. And like I said, people man people 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 so that's all i got for you guys i'll see you later